<clears throat> now this video is uh, dealing with the 500 hour maintenance um, for the Dimension Elite 3D printer <clears throat> and I've just got a video here of me carrying out that maintenance but I will be pausing and skipping sections to try to save time and uh, present myself as a coordinated and organized person. Um, the reality is sometimes we're not always that coordinated or organized. Uh, things can be a bit chaotic, but I just want to save time for anyone who's willing to sit down and spend the time to view this video. Now, so here's the Dimensionally 3D printer. And by, the, by the way, I've got here a vacuum cleaner, uh, a vacuum uh, from the uh, Protomat system S62 PCB board milling machine, which I'm going to use later to clean out this uh, the inside of this printer and there's a little brown box here and that actually has some tools and spare parts uh, associated with this printer which were provided for us when we bought the machine initially. Now I'm going to start with the uh, user guide and I'll just go to the top of the page for starters. Okay so Dimension uh, Elite user guide and here's a photograph of the, uh, the printer on some wheels. Now uh, just going down to maintenance, uh, here are the tools and uh, there's the anti-seize compound which I'm not actually going to use in this 500 hour maintenance. Uh, after each build, I'll just go to full screen so it's a bit easier to read. Uh, can I get rid of this? There we go. After each build, empty the purge container. The black plastic purge container is attached to the right hand side. Uh, <coughs> Okay, a full container may impact part quality. And I'll go through that in the video. And here's the 500 hour maintenance, clean fan filter, um, and change the tip flicker. And um, Okay, they've got a talk reading here. I just tighten it up. Okay. All right, this is good. The brush height is more important than tip height because I I didn't exactly measure the tip height. I just stuck it in and hoped that I got it right. And here's the brush. The brush is actually at the front and the tip is behind. And they're not showing the screws on this diagram, but here are the screws here for the brush, which has changed every 2,000 hours. And above that are the flicker screws. Now, I found it quite hard to pull this flicker out. Um, I had to loosen the screws right off and I actually had to uh, gently push the print head to the left to get it out of the road so I could access. Because when you turn, when you shut it down, the printhead sits directly above this assembly and it's very hard to gain access to this area with the printhead in the road. And here's the 2000 hour maintenance. Uh, basically you've got to clean off the guide rods and you've got to clean and set the lead access screw as well. I think that would be very difficult to clean all that back. Um, but anyway that's what the instructions say. Uh, this grease can cause skin irritation so you should put some surgical gloves on and then put the grease back on. Use the grease sparingly. And there's a diagram showing where all the guide rods and the lead screw is. And as needed maintenance, remove debris, build up vacuum the build chamber, etc. So I'm just going to go through that in the video. Incidentally, um, it says up here for print hours, refer to Catalyst DX Printer Services tab, Printer Info button. I'm pretty sure I printed, all, I selected that button and I couldn't see any printer hours. Now at the moment I've got the printer shut down, but uh, here's the uh, software. Just zoom that out. So this is the Catalyst DX software and I'm um, got the uh, printer history here. Now I saved this as a text file and I opened it up in an Excel spreadsheet. 
and the idea being I wanted to get a total of this build duration now to be really careful the way they've done the build duration is hours and minutes so you can't just add it up it won't work you've got to when you import this text file you've got to separate by spaces and semicolons or most importantly semicolons to get this column of data out um, I'll just go with show you where that is just close that for a minute now you can see that it's disconnected at the moment but basically I've got the printer history from here now they reckon that if you go to printer info uh, now it won't work because the printer switched off it'll show the total number of hours and I think I do remember uh, that there were warning messages popping up to change the, um, the, the flickers I do remember saying that so in the video I'll probably say that it, it doesn't but I actually think I do remember that it does so, I'll just show you the spreadsheet I did. So what I did was uh, I've imported all that data, spread it out. These are the build duration hours and minutes. And I've done a little maths formula. I've summed up all the minutes divided by 60. And I've added that value to that value. It gives me the total number of hours, which is 1300 hours. So basically, uh, since we've done no maintenance on this, it's overdue for maintenance. And in 700 hours time, it'll be due for the 2000 hour maintenance. So I'll just play the video now. Material off the top here. Now, a word of caution is when it's switched on, it's warm quite hot. It's, about, it's warm in here, but the print head is quite hot. You can burn yourself if you touch the print head.
a lot of the list material falls in below in this bottom section. if I open the text file and it's quite messy so you really have to import it into Excel which I've shown you before or your printer is handled. Uh, you can save it as a text file and what I've done uh, which hopefully I'll show you later or earlier depending on how I put this video together um, you can import that text file uh, into Excel and what I did was I separated uh, I did a text import and separated it on spaces and full columns <clears throat> and what that does is um, you've got uh, build time in that data and the build time is out so I've explained all this already I'm just going to skip past this part okay um, on. so anyway 500 hour maintenance clean fan filter so I'll just read this out uh, to clean fan filter locate lower fan on the rear of panel of dimension and remove plastic frame that secures fan filter Clean, filter it, soak and water, block the dry, reassemble. Um, now I'm assuming that all this is done when it's turned off. It doesn't actually say turn off the printer. Uh, now it does say here for print hours, refer to Catalyst Printer Services tab, print info button. So that's probably the easier way to do it. I'll just tell to be honest here, I've read that just the um, uh, just regarding the uh, cleaning the fan filter, uh, you can, you could actually unclip the back of the, uh, the the fan filter, unclip the fan filter at the back of the printer, um, and clean that filter. Uh, but I just think it's safer to turn things off before you start pulling things off 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 other off off equipment. 
Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. It'll take a while to shut down. Okay, the printer's shut down now. Now, you can see where our printer's located, it's right up against the back wall. Um, but I have to access this rear panel. This thing is quite heavy. Uh, so, uh, this is a, a bit of a, you know, a challenge, perhaps a hazard, moving this printer just to access the rear fan. Incidentally, if you look at the uh, user guide for this equipment, I'll just go up to the top page. On the top page, you can see that this printer is actually mounted on wheels, uh, which is quite a, a good idea. Uh, the way we've got ours is it's sitting on a bench which is, has no wheels on it. Uh, as it turns out, this is not really a problem. around the back and, and move off that bracket so that just clips on and clips off put that up there by the way I should just say you might be wondering why I keep looking to the right I've actually got the computer monitor which is hooked up to the webcam uh, off to the right hand side of the screen and uh, I, I was checking my uh, how I looked in front of the camera by looking to the right uh, I think in future I'll have to make sure that monitor is just behind the webcam so it uh, doesn't look as strange. Okay, so this is the fan filter and you can see there's a layer of grey on there. So yeah, it is a bit dirty. Uh, I'm sure there are worse out there but yeah, there is a bit of dirt. So it says, clean filter with soap and water, blot it to dry, reassemble. Okay, now I'm going to just turn the, turn the camera around over to our sink area where I'll do this job. Now I've got this assembly here. Okay, so I think I could probably have done this without turning it off. I don't think it's necessary to turn this off to take off the fan filter, but there's no harm done by turning it off to do it. Soap here. Now, since there's water on this uh, filter, I want to make sure this is properly dry before I put it back in. I don't want to risk any moisture getting on the uh, electronics within the, uh, the unit. That's nice and clean now. The instruction manual says block to dry, so we've got some paper towel. Being sponged, it's uh, absorbed quite a lot of water. be okay to put back in. So make sure it's totally dry though. Some moisture in there, but 
uh, certainly not visible. Alright, repositioning the uh, fan. Now this sits about back on the back there. this cover first. So I'm just putting it inside the clip-on cover. Okay, looking good. Okay, after a bit of fiddling around, I've got it back on. So, let's have a look. What's next? So, we've cleaned the fan filter and we've reassembled that. Now, the next thing to do is tip cleaning assembly, brush flicker assembly. This definitely needs changing. See figure 16, page 52. Alright, so there's some drawings there. So that is, as I showed you before, uh, goes on page 30. Okay, so maintenance, and basically I'm looking on the tip cleaning assembly which are these two pages. The flicker should be replaced after 500 hours. It's only necessary to replace the brush up to 2,000 hours. So, I'm going to grab a little spare parts here. They've got So this is the flicker, that little piece of rubber, and that one and the in the bag, that's the brush. Okay, we don't need to replace that yet. Um, incidentally, the number of hours in the printer at the moment are around 1300, 1300 hours. So I've got to replace that. Uh, completely powered down the dimension, so you can see it's completely powered down. Uh, remove the purge container, alright? Remove the purge container. What else? Uh, remove the old flicker, loosen flicker attachment, rear screws and pull up on the flicker. So we will loosen the screws and pull up on the flicker. I'll just get some light in here so you can see what I'm doing on the inside. Just see if I uh, get some lighting in here. So um, I might bring this camera a little bit closer. Okay. So in here there are two uh, there are two screws. There's two bottom screws here which uh, contain the to hold the brush in. 
somewhat close enough. So we've got two. So this is a good zoom in now. Two screws that hold the, the brush in, and we've got two screws here that um, hold the little flicker in. Now I see that that uh, print head is directly over the uh, the flicker, so hopefully I can get that out easily enough. But the instructions say do, do power it down. Uh, incidentally, those two those screws are Allen key screws. So the first thing I did was I grabbed the Phillips head screw screwdriver, and then I realised they were Allen's key Allen's key heads. Uh, the company was kind enough to give us some Allen's key heads, Allen's keys. And I see I've got one missing, so I hope I've got the right size here. Yes, very good. Uh, incidentally, I thought to myself, one of those camping lights that fit on top of your head uh, would have been a great idea for in here, so that I could see what I was doing and also you, the viewer, could see clearly what I was doing. I just found that this lamp, it worked, but it was kind of a bit bulky and it tended to be into the road all the time. Now, I won't take those screws all the way out because I've got a feeling it'll be very hard to put those back in again. Quite sure how you meant to access this with the print head directly on the top. Yeah, I found that I could not. Actually, the instructions say to pull the flicker up, but as you can see, when you shut the printer down, the print head is sitting directly over the top of the flicker. You just can't pull it up. So you have to actually gently slide the print head out of the road. So you can see, you can't actually see it clearly, but I've got the long nose pliers and I'm trying to pull the flicker out to the left. It's pretty tight. As you can see, I can't remove it from this angle. So I can feel they're loose. The um, flicker is still quite stuck in there. So here I move the print head gently to the left. You can see my right hand pushing it aside. That's the only way to gain proper access to this flicker. Okay, what I've done to allow the access is I've just pr pushed the print head to the left. Um, hopefully that won't be a problem. But I simply had to have access. The print head is in the road. It's finally come out, and uh, to be honest with you, it doesn't look any different to the one that I'm about to put in. I don't really see any wear and tear on that. So they say that should be changed every 500 hours, but <clears throat> you know, maybe the wear and tear is too small for me to actually see. So I'm just placing the new one back in and tightening up the uh, Allen key, the Allen screws, and sort of looking at the height of it, making sure it's about the right height.
Okay, so here's the photograph, or the diagram and the photograph of the um, assemblies. <coughs> Good. So there you can see the flicker assembly and the screws, and you can see how I've positioned that. Now, according to the manual, the flicker should be the same height as the brush. Now, I'm hoping that I got that right. I think it only looks higher because I've tilted the camera angle up high and it's looking down, so it looks like the flicker is higher, but it's not really. It's just a perspective. And there's the print head over there. So I'm just going to push that print head back again. And that was the position of the print head originally. So those screws are nice and tight. Let's check one more time. the old one in the bin. Now, um, that's the 500 hour maintenance done. Uh, there is a 2000 hour maintenance and it basically says clean and lubricate the Z-axis lead screw. The X-axis, so Z-axis is up and down. Uh, I might just actually show those. Purge tank has to go back in. To uh, clean and lubricate the Z-axis lead screw, the X-axis guide rods to Y-axis guide rods to Z-axis guide rods. Uh, see figure 17 for location. Clean with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, Nylox grease can cause skin irritation when handled using impervious gloves and avoids contact with skin and clothing. Okay, so those probably those surgical rubber gloves will be fine. Here's a diagram showing those locations. And you can just see under here as needed maintenance, uh, vacuum build chamber clean the door glass, remove debris build up, that's what I've done just before. So just identify those things. So there's the Z-axis guide rods. And I shouldn't touch them. Uh, there's the Z-axis lead screw. Uh, to the Y-axis guide rods on here and here. And this is the X-axis uh, guide rods here and here. So all up there are six guide rods that need to be cleaned and lubricated. But that's at 2,000 hours, so we've got another few hours, even though I, I personally think they need a bit of lubrication now. But anyway, follow the rules. Now, uh, to do list, basically I need to make up a, um, just that. As I was saying, uh, to do list, I need to um, create uh, a sheet of paper with uh, the hours when maintenance is due and what type of maintenance is due and whether it's been done or not. And I'll have to make that up and put that on the side here so that uh, we can maintain this uh, piece of equipment properly. Uh, but for now, I think that's it. Hopefully I've done everything right. I think I have. And, um, Let's put everything away. And now uh, what I'll do is before I turn this on, I might leave it leave it to go for a while and I'll let that filter dry a bit more before I turn everything on. So I'll um, wait a couple of hours, maybe this afternoon, I'll do, do another print job. 
And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Yep, uh, that's it. Definitely. Thank you very much. And I'll upload that video to YouTube shortly. Uh, thanks very much. Remember, my YouTube channel is under Simon Cumming. S I M O N C U M M I N G. Okay, so just this is my YouTube channel, and um, you can just see the other videos I've got under there. Different subjects. And that's enough for now, I think.